In this video, we're going to talk about overbuilding using forms in Fusion 360. Hey everyone, this is Matt with Learn Everything About Design, and in this video, we're going to go kind of quick, and I want to cover something called overbuilding. Now, overbuilding typically means that you are going to be making a bunch of individual surfaces. Now, I haven't covered this before on the channel because I don't model this way, but a lot of people do, so I thought it was important that we at least talk about it, why you might use it, and what are some potential benefits. So one of the reasons I don't use this overbuilding method is because that doesn't give me the fine level of control that I want on certain areas to add details. If you're just trying to make a very general shape using Fusion 360 forms, this might be a valid way for you to do it, and here is one of the main reasons why. When you're building with forms, changing directions is one of the most difficult things to do. Oftentimes you get these star points where three or five edges intersect. When we do this by overbuilding, we don't have to worry about that because the intersection is going to be taken care of after these are converted to a surface. Another reason this might be helpful is because sometimes the level of detail or the number of divisions you need for different parts of your design are going to be different. So for example, the side has a lot more divisions on it because of the curvature, while the top is a very broad shape and doesn't need nearly as many. So what does it mean to create this overbuilt design using forms, and what do we do with it after this? Well, once we have all of these bodies created, we can finish the form, and they get converted into surfaces, because in this case, they're all open. Now, there's no reason that it would get converted to a solid unless you completely enclosed a certain portion of it, and in that case, you're not overbuilding anymore. So now that we have all of these, there are a couple different ways that we can go about putting them together. One way is to go to our surface tools and to use trim. Now, one problem with this is Fusion 360 doesn't have a mutual trim option, which means that you need to pick a surface and then pick the areas that you want to trim. While this is a possibility, it does take quite a bit of time for us to get a result. So instead of doing that, I'm going to delete that, and we're going to take a look at the Create Boundary Fill tool. Now, Boundary Fill allows you to select solid bodies, planes, and surfaces to create an enclosed volume or volumes. So in this case, we want to select all of our surfaces, and you'll notice that it gives us a green highlighted area. This is the only option for us to create a volume. When we select the cells, there's only one choice, and we can create a new body and say OK. Now we didn't choose to remove tools, which was an option, so it leaves all of these surfaces here. When you're creating a complex design, leaving the original surfaces can be helpful for when you want to do things like offset or inset certain areas. So now you can see that we have this somewhat complex shape by using those tools, and it is a solid body, which means that we can come back and add things like fillets to corners. And because Fusion 360 does have some options, we can turn on curvature continuity. We can repeat this process on the back corners. And again, we can pull these in using curvature continuity. And then we can add one last fillet on the top edge. Now, again, this is not the way that I typically build models because I like to have a higher level of control at the forms design stage rather than the converted body. But if you're creating consumer products or designs where you require big, broad surfaces and you want to do some work after the fact, this can be a valid option. But again, it's important that you play around with your choices and you figure out what is going to be the best design option for you. At this stage, we're not going to go any further with this overbuild approach, and I probably won't cover it again on the channel because, again, I don't model in this way. But if you have any questions, please let me know. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.